بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين سيدنا ونبينا محمد بن عبد الله الصادق الأمين ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله سيد الأنبياء وخاتم المرسلين أدى الأمانة وبلغ الرسالة ونصح الأمة وكشف الغم وجاهد في الله حق جهاده أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر صدق الله العظيم Brother and Sister in Islam, respective viewers, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and ahlan wa sahlan and welcome to our program. First of all, we ask Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, may Allah tabarak wa ta'ala make it easy for our Muslim brothers in Syria and in Palestine and in Egypt and in Libya and each and every corner of the world. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, may Allah tabarak wa ta'ala guide all the Muslims to practice the teaching of Islam inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant all mankind hidayah to taste Islam and to experience that wonderful deen, deen of Islam, inshallah. Once again, we thank you for your emails and SMSs. And shukran jazeelan, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you for comment. And shukran jazeelan for all our viewers from Botswana, that lovely country. Shukran jazeelan that you are tuning to our ITV. May Allah reward you and all our African uh, brothers who are watching us. And shukran jazeelan for our viewers from KwaZulu Natal and Durban and Cape Town and shukran jazeelan brothers and sisters in Islam that you are tuning to our uh, ITV. May Allah use ITV as a member of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and means for hidayah inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant Dr. Ahmad Adam Shifa on Kamil. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for him. May Allah tabarak wa ta'ala count him as those who spend their life in the, the, the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Brother and sister in Islam, We'd like to thank our friend who sent for me SMS regarding the stress which the Muslim got it. Muslim always have that type of concern and worry. Because we have something is called ham and we have something is called gham. That is not our halat and our condition to have that stress. We have stress because when we disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They ask Sayyidina al-Imam al-Shafi'i, why are you so worried? He said, how can... I do not get worry while something are running after me. Imam Shafi'i is the, is the Imam Al Abid Al, 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 al Zahid, the man who knows the wisdom of Allah in Quran Al Kareem. He said, I cannot rest and relax while Allah is waiting for me to fulfill His command. You know, we have in, in, in our Islam, we have a command, it's called do and do not do. Many of us, we are very easy to do. But when it comes to do not do, we are a bit slow. Or oh, some people do not do, but they are unable to do, do. So what we say, Allah give us command, aqim as salah. We find people are praying salah, maybe doing that salah. But la uh, taqrabu zina, do not come closer to zina. So the command of Allah is about do, do it, practice it, and abstain from some. So he said, I cannot rest while I did not fulfill that command of do, and do not do. Imam al-Shafi'i also said, I cannot relax and rest while my Prophet وسلم, is waiting for me to fulfill his right, the haqq al-Rasul, the right of sunnah. Brother and sister in Islam, we will be questioned about the sunnah tradition of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ask yourself, you're relaxing, did you practice the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Did you fulfill the haqq and the right of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Now you will be questioned about that in a day of Qiyamah. Imam al-Shafi'i said, also we're having a problem that this dunya and this life doesn't leave me alone. It gives me a lot of calamity and some difficulties. Life is rough and tough. So what should I do? How can I manage between my necessity in this dunya and that calamity and my iman? And al qabidu ala deenihi kal qabidu ala al-jamr, the one who practicing the teaching of his religion, 
He is struggling a lot because a lot of attraction, a lot of fitness around him. So he said, Dunya is giving me a lot of fitness. So I'm also in battle. I'm fighting. And Imam Shafi said, what about my nafs? I cannot relax while I have something in my body. It's encouraging me to do some evil. And the nafs mentioned in the Quran 115 times. The worst enemy that our own desire, that hawa, that desire, or that ego, or that I inside ourselves, which it causes us to do evil. Pride and arrogance and evil and greed come from that portion. And he said, and also I cannot relax while shaitan promised to take us to Jahannam. Shaitan is our own enemy. And he made qasam and take an oath in front of Allah that I will trap them and track them, all of them. Except those you select them for yourself. So he said, no, shaitan is, is a war between me and shaitan and I have to win. So how am I going to relax? If I, get, uh, if I rest, shaitan will get me. Imam al-Shafi said, also, I cannot relax and enjoy while my children running after me with, with means. They want some needs and necessity. As I said before, the, 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 the alim, if he's short of, of food and all that, he cannot teach. He was sitting in the class and his son came to him and said, Mommy is telling you that our oil is finished. We have no oil at home or cake flour or something. Alim stops teaching and he said, may Allah punish you. I lost 200 questions from my head because of the oil. So now the children want the school fees, they want food, they want this and that. And we want to live halal. We don't want to rob someone and still we want to get halal. And now to get halal now is a fight. So Imam al-Shafi said, no, al bin nafaqa. Our children need some livelihood. They want some spending. They want means to survive. You want the bread? Imam al-Shafi said, no, I cannot rest also while these two angels are waiting for me, what I'm going to say. You're going to record. Good or bad. So we been monitored by, by, by radio recording. The, the, the angels is recording. So what we're going to do now? Huh? You must mind your words. You must mind your eyes. Mind your, your, your body. Because we are under... The, 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 the spy camera. That spy camera from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and will be questioned about that. Where are we going to go? And he said also, I cannot relax and take away that concern while I know that Malakul Mouth is running after me to catch me, to take me to Jahannam, oh Jannah. So um, death, death is running after me. So the Imam al-Shafi was so concerned and Muslim also must be concerned about it. This is life, how to manage to live. How to manage to live. That's why we call that person a very pious person. Because he managed, he adjusted uh, eight things as the Imam al-Shafi said uh, and spoke about it. But Muslims must not have anxiety and stress because of dunya and worldly things. We have stress after we commit a sin. We have a stress when we see someone being oppressed. We have stress when we see the people far from the, 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 the rules of Allah and the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We got stress and concern when we see our own children does not fall in, in a track of Islam, on the road of Islam. When we see the kitab of Allah is being abused, the sunnah of Nabi being abused, so you will get ajr for that. As we said many times that there are some sin will go away because of that ham and that gham for the pleasure of Allah. But to have stress because you don't have money or that man build a house and you don't have, that is jealous, that is envy, you will get uh, no reward for that. That's why we appeal to our brother and sister in Islam to have concern. And after that concern, we need to do some action. You cannot just have stress and khalas. You must do a little bit of practical action so that you can relieve yourself and come back to the road of Allah and gain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, there is no fear and grief for the Muslim if he fulfill the command of Allah and practicing the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah tabarak wa ta'ala show our beloved Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with a reward and maqam al-Mahmud because he created that concern in the heart of, of the ummah. We have that concern because our beloved Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave us this concern. 
when you see a Muslim without hijab, Muslim women, and you get concern, you get reward for that. As we see, when we see something wrong, we got three options. If you can change it with your hand, alhamdulillah. If it's possible, so you got for, if it's impossible, you go for tongue. And if it's impossible, so you go for heart. That heart, we call it concern, that worry. So when you see your son not reading salah, you try to, to discipline him and try to make him a straight path and all that. That concern of the mother, inshallah, will get ajr. Some sense only goes away when you have concern about your children, about your family members. That boy didn't read salah. This girl, she didn't do school well. This one like that. So this is a real life. But to be a, a, a careless, we see a Muslim getting hiding on Palestine and we don't care. And we see a Muslim on Kashmir and Afghanistan, we don't care. No. Al Muslim, Kal Muslim, Kal Bunyan, is we are like a one body. If anybody got hurt, any portion of the body got hurt, all our body will have restless and also it will be painful. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you for that concern if it is for the pleasure of Allah. Short break, we'll continue after that, inshallah. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. Brother and sister Islam, welcome back to our program. I'd like to thank those who are watching us for the first time. Shukran jazeelan, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide all of us to practice the teaching of our beloved Nabi Muhammad al-Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And once again, we thank all our brothers for the emails and SMSs. The second request from the brother in Islam is regarding his old age family members. And he's reminding us about how Islam look after the old age people. Number one, number one, I want to remind all of you that Muslims, they die young. Because the, the four Imams, they calculate and they count the old age from the 75 years. So if you are 75 years old, so we say that is the old age uh, person. And our taqdeer as a Muslim, we die with between 60 and 70. So our ummah is very young ummah. And also our ummah is shabab. 70% of the population of the Muslims are youth and young. So very few who are after 75 or 80 because Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said, أَعْمَارُ أُمَّتِي بَيْنَ السِّتِّينِ وَالسَّبْعِينَ أو كَمَا قَالَ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وسلم. The average of the age of my ummah between 60 and 70. So it's not so many who are reaching 75 or 80, it's a few. Now when we talk about this type of age with this sheikh or an old person, uh, we know that our dunya is very short and we are here not to live long. Your Nabi died after 60, a few years after 60. Sahaba, Ummahatul Sahaba, Ummahatul Mu'mineen, the, the Anbiya, very few Nabi who remain long. Anyhow, why we, we die young? Because it's not our destination. This dunya is not for us. The, we, our destination is everlasting life, which is an akhirah. But now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is kareem, very generous, and is ghafoor rahim. People used to live 120 and 100 and 900 years and all that, but Muslims die between uh, uh, 60 and 70. So you find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us barakah on our ibadah. You read salah, you're writing 50 salah. You give one good deed, Allah writes 700 doubles of, 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 of that deed, the reward. You, you gain Laylatul Qadr 83 years ibadah. So there is a compensation, there is a coverage from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to just fill up that missing years which we have. In Islam, you will never find a pious person or the man who claim that he is a truly Muslim abuses his old age people or any old age person. Even in jihad, you're not allowed to kill them or terrorize them. The ulama call them al-rawasi al al ard These are the, 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 the creation of Allah who are balancing our society. Any Muslim abuses his old age uh, father or, or grandfather or mother, 
he has no iman and his weight is not laysa minna is not from amongst us so when you read the hadith laysa minna man lam yarham saghiruna wa yuwaqqir kabiruna is not from amongst us the one who does not show mercy to the youngest and show honor and respect to the eldest in every religion you find that type of respect and islam is a final religion our nabi is the final messenger definitely we have that manner in our deen and it's not uh, only akhlaq is a command of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even if you have these people are kufar this believer you have no right to abuse them we have to honor them and respect them allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us imma yablughanna indaka al-kibr they must stay with us there's nothing in islam it's called uh, granny cottage or old age home and all that no 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 they must stay with us and how many times we do that number two and when you speak you speak a very noble and holy and respected words so there is no space or no chance for those who are shouting raising the voice or the abuses their grandparents or uh, old age people even if they are not from their family because it's very hard when we see the muslim disrespect that old age people uh, which they gain the anger of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the daughters of nabi shuaib girls you know how, how women respected in, in, in islam and how sharia honored women to keep them at home but the two daughters of nabi shuaib because their father is an old man they went to do the father's work that is for the sake of respect and as a command of Allah from Adam السلام, till the day of Qiyamah we have to respect and fulfill the right of our old age people not only, not only uh, uh, respect you have no right to uh, 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 dishonor them by any means or in any how by saying even of of is just a, a sound but that is counting as a major sin make sabr and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that all the age people, they have a lot of barakah and they are our prayer. We, we, we rely on them. The dua is accepted. But sometimes our old age people, they turn to be a children. That is called arzalul umr. That is the worst part of their life because the brain not functioning well, the body is not functioning well. So we need to look after. Is our day and our turn to pay them back as they look after us we have to look after them and the day will come you will experience the same so every muslim must know the right of the old age people muslims and non-muslims that is very very important sayyidina abu bakr siddiq giving dawah to his old uh, father and if he, he asked him to walk and go to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam to uh, say the kalima shahada or to give that testimony of islam to say la ilaha illallah muhammadur rasulullah when rasulullah sallallahu alaihi saw abu bakr siddiq walking with his father just to want to come to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he was very upset and he said no i should go to that person it's my duty to go to that old age man should he should not come to me a nabi of allah said like that that message for all our brothers the one who give his old age people work give them taklif try to give them hard time respecting them in front of the people in the society and we have to let them feel that they are honor for us not a burden and they are here for us so we have to let them feel that they still own us they ask luqman al-hakim your father passed away. He said, now I'm the owner of my belongings and my property. Because in your father's or mother's lifetime, they are the owner. Al-abdu wa ma malaka li sayyidah. The slave and what he got belonged to his master. And then, consult them. Do not treat your old age parents or grandparents or friends as the expiry people or people who are out of order. These people, yes, they are not educated like you. Aqal is not functioning like the way you have. But you forgot something very important. 
they have tawfiq from Allah. They can say one word inspired by Allah. They have a, I don't want to say wahi. They have tawfiq from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your father you got hikmah. After so many years, you got nur of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you make mashura with him. You consult your father, your grandfather. There is one word you're going to come out from his mouth. Inspired by Allah, Allah will throw this word in, in, in the tongue of your grandfather or father and you will gain tawfiq. So get the barakah of mashura with your old age people and let them make dua for you. The other thing also, the dua of them, the dua of old age people is accepted. Many of the brothers, they survive by because of the dua of their old age people. You know why we, we say the dua is, is accepted? Because these people are very close to Allah. They are not strict to dunya. They don't have that desire like us. And on top of that, he's a truly a slave of Allah. He doesn't have that ability of doing haram. What your grandmother is doing now? She is unable to go for haram or to do, to do evil. Very peaceful women. Small problem. And Allah excused them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them ijazat and gave them permission for some thought of ibadah. They can set when he's musafir on Ramadan. They is excused from Allah. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave excuse, what about you and I? Definitely we have to accept the excuse and we give them the excuse. These people they need a lot of care because they are very sensitive. They want someone to listen to them. You treat them like your own child. That message for our sister-in-law, daughter-in-law, uh, wives, children, this man is a wali of Allah in your house. Baraka. I know they trouble us. They give some uh, thought of funny action. But what we do, sabrun jamil. There's no way besides to make sabrun jamil. We have to teach our children how to respect our parents. Because the day will come and they, will, they have to pay for what they did. The other thing also, for the, for the daughters and brothers and daughter-in-law and all that, this old lady, this old lady or old man by your house, in the day of Qiyamah, Allah will ask you about their ibadah. You have to remind them about salah. You have to advise them about ghusl, tahara. And you have to always uh, keep an eye on them on ibadah because you are responsible for them on the day, on the day of Qiyamah. You have to pay for this salah. These people are not majnoon. They are not insane. These people are not out of salah. If salah is farad upon them. They must go and read salah. Who is responsible? The son grandson, daughter, granddaughter, daughter-in-law, anyone who lives with them. That's why I say, فَأَمَّا يُبْلُغَنَّ عِنْدَكَ الْكِبَرُ So they must, they must be under our care, and we are responsible for these people. We have to remind them about the ibadah of salah and fasting and all the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah make it easy for us. And may Allah make it easy for our children to look after us when we reach that stages of age, inshallah. My cameraman asked me to stop for break. We'll continue after the break, inshallah. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back, brother and sister Islam. And shukran jazeelan that you are tuning to our channel, ITV. On your behalf, I'd like to thank my cameraman and all our editors and all our brothers here in the studio. And shukran jazeelan for their wonderful work. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us. And we'd like to thank all our viewers uh, for, for the emails and SMSs and shukran jazeelan. Now, my, my beloved viewers from KwaZulu Natal and Durban. Uh, I got so many uh, uh, requests from our brothers from Durban and here in South Africa regarding the muhabbat of awliyaullah and uh, especially Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his family. Because we find nowadays people, uh, they say it in South Africa, yeah, I'm a Sayyid or I am a descendant of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And some people, they are a family of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa You know, everyone is very proud of his uh, progeny. You know, everyone wants to link himself to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa But before we talk about 
آل البيت أهل البيت. We have to remind uh, all our brothers that uh, the relationship between you and Prophet Muhammad sallallahu is not only blood, is not only that genetic things. It they call it qaraba to Rasul qurba. What is qurba? You believe makes you a family of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Your action makes you a family of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Uh, he did hold the hand of Salman al-Farisi, radiallahu an, and he said, Salman minna ala al-bayt. Salman is from my family. That Salman is not from Banu Hashim, is not from Quraysh, is not from Mecca, is not Arab at all. But he became a relative of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and he became ala al-bayt. You heard in, 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 in hadith or in Islam, uh, people say, ahl al-bayt, and Al al Bayt. You find they are not the same, these two words. We have Ahl al Bayt with the Ha, Ha, those members of the family of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam living with him inside his house. So we call them Ahl al Bayt. Like Sayyidina Fatima radiallahu anha, the wives of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, Sayyidina Ali ibn Abi Talib, Al Hassan wal Hussein. You find these people who lived in the, pro the premises or the building or that house of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We call them Ahlul Bayt. So now I want to remind the brother, you are not Ahlul Bayt. You are from the other uh, type, we call them Alal Bayt. Alal Bayt, the second generation after the grandchildren of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, those who, who did not live with Rasulullah sallallahu Again, I have to remind you, it's not only that, but if you have Iman, you will join that type of, uh, of title, like Salman al-Farisi, Salman minna ala al-bayt. So, Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sallam. Alihi from Sayyidina al-Hasan wa al-Hussein, grandchildren of Rasulullah sallallahu up to the day of Qiyamah. So if you are a Sayyid, if you call it Sayyid, so you are from Al al -Bayt. You carry the genetic of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praise Ahlul Bayt. Praise Ahlul Bayt. Udhu billahi min ash-shaytan rajim bismillahi ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Inna ma liyudhib Allahu ankum ar-rijsa Ahlul Bayt wa yutahhirukum tathira. That the people who just were there under the blanket of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam under the shade of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his house. وَيُطَهِرُكُمْ تَطْهِيرًا He will purify them absolutely a purification or cleanness. Now, when you say تَطْهِيرًا very clean and pure, ask yourself, do you carry the genetic of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? You said, yes. Okay, but Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said, Ana khiyarun min khiyarin min khiyar. I'm pure from pure from pure. And the descendings as well, pure from pure from pure. So it's better for you, do not say it, because the way you are now, and the way you abuse that genetic, it's, it's, it's a shame. So it's better for, for, for you to say, no, I am not. I am not now because really we do not fulfill the haq of Al al-Bayt. Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is such a great Nabi, a grandson of Ibrahim alayhi sallam, which was Ummah, and his children, great children, and grand, uh, grandchildren are very great grandchildren. And also you are a great person if you fulfill the haq of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi sallam so that you can Proudly say, I am a, a genetic of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Obviously, if you carry the, gene, the, gene, the genes of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the inheritance of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, definitely you are great. You will find you yourself wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, the Sahaba, they did not carry the genetic, but uh, they, uh, they also get some, uh, they call it nadh. What is nadh? That fragrance of nubuwa. That reflection of Nubuwa, they became great. Hundred thousand Sahabi, 
they get that atr from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Of course, if you are genetic of Rasulullah, you will have khair. Not only that, even you follow Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa they will carry that, gen- that, that khair. Al khayru fi wa fu mati ila yawmuddin. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa spread his khair in each and every Muslim. Every Muslim carry one quality of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But don't forget, the family of Rasulullah sallallahu they carry the genetic and carry the, the, the hum and the stress of da'wah and carry the inheritance of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi What inheritance? Not money and houses. Deen. And anyone who take the inheritance of deen, he must suffer like the way Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa was struggling to spread the deen of Islam and the kalima of la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Inheritance of Rasulullah is not only the name. Sabr, jihad, helping, akhlaq, deen of Islam. Look at the, the family of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa They don't take inheritance. Nabi should not leave any inheritance. And if he left, inheritance must go for Baytul Mal, for the needy. Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa when he's in Sakaratul Maut, he had few dinars and he did not... Uh, allow the people to keep that money while he's uh, uh, going or uh, leaving this dunya to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what I'm trying to say, we are Sayyid because of our a'mal. Our action makes you al al even if you don't carry the, the genetic. But now if you talk about your, your lineage, your, your, your family tree, you can say whatever you say. And remember Abu, Abu, uh, uh, Abu Lahab was the uncle of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi Watch out because you are, maybe you are from that tree. Let us have a guarantee tree which is taqwa, iman, the deen of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Wives of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they were sabirat, very patience, akhlaq, deen. And don't forget family of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa a responsible person to spread deen al-Islam as is, with no bid'ah, with no any invention, with no any uh, 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 changing of the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Think about Sayyidina al-Hasan al Hussein, how he dealt with that fitna. Think about Sayyidina Ali ibn Abi Talib, how he dealt with that fitna and that dispute. And think about Sayyidina Uthman ibn Affan and see what they used to do in their lifetime. They could not use nubuwat for the worldly things. They were low on in, 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 in materialistic things. They, Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to feed people, but his family are struggling because they don't eat zakat, they don't eat sadaqah, they take hadiyah. Sayyidina Al-Hassan al Hussein used to cry because of hunger. Sayyidina Fatima Zahra radiallahu anha she, she used to come and complain that the, the hunger to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. See how they suffer. Sayyidina Ali ibn Abi Talib died shaheed. Sayyidina Al-Hassan al Hussein died shaheed. And you see how much struggle the wife of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam after the departure of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And they died very simple and humble life. They could not eat from uh, zakat or sadaqa or lillah, the eight from hadiyya. And that's why we said al uh, ulama warathatul anbiya, the scholars are the inheritance of prophets. What type of inheritance the prophet leaves? Deen, mana, akhlaq, da'wah, struggle and suffering. So any alim want to use deen to have luxurious life, you say you are not the inheritance of Ambiya. Because Ambiya, they don't leave money and property. They leave deen, they leave morality, akhlaq, and qiyam. They call it qiyam. That's why, brother and sister in Islam, we should not misuse that word. It's called I'm Sayyid, or I'm Ashraf, or family of Rasulullah. Inshallah, all of us, we are the family of Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Make us proud of that in the day of Qiyamah after we fulfill the haq of Rasulullah and the haq of the deen al-Islam 
and the sunnah of our beloved Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Once again, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us as a family of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the day of Qiyamah, inshallah. My cameraman asked me for a break. We'll continue after the break. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brother and sister Islam, welcome back to our program. Once again, we thank you for your emails and phone calls and SMSs and shukran jazeela. I'd like to thank Brother Abdul Rahman from Cape Town and all our viewers and sister Shamila and all our friends from Cape Town. Shukran jazeela that you are tuning to our ITV. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for all of us to pass the message of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we thank all our ulama and our presenters those who always keep us in touch with Deenul Islam through ITV, inshallah. Once again, we thank you and we thank all our brothers here in the studio. Loving, love Al al Bayt, as I said before the break, is a must. We have to love Al al Bayt. And anyone who linked to Rasulullah, we, we love the shoes of Rasulullah, we love the, 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 the atr of Rasulullah, the hair of Rasulullah, and Masjid al Rasul. That is called hub. That hub al Rasul, wajib. The love of Rasulullah is wajib, is a must. But what type of love, as I said on the other program, love under the scale of kitab and sunnah. Because watch out, out of that uh, uh, love causes a problem to you and your akhirah. Because everyone wants to satisfy his muhabbat to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But Imam Malik, when he heard the name of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his first turned yellow and his condition changed. Imam Malik, Imam Malik. Sayyiduna Ja'far ibn Muhammad, he loves joking a lot. But when he want to talk about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he stopped joking, ran for wudu, and mentioned his name with wudu. Must have tahara. Look at this. As I said before, uh, they don't want to uh, uh, eat watermelon because they don't know how Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did eat. Many people don't want to uh, use a, uh, wear a shoes in Medina because he said, no, I don't know, maybe I put my shoes in the footsteps of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So definitely the muhabbat of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is wajib. We, all of us, we longing to meet Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and we are missing the Hazrat of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But now is that true love for those who abuse the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they want to do something against the Sharia of Allah and the Sunnah of Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. On another hand, we find a Muslim are very rough and very cruel to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They treat him like a normal person. They don't count him as Khatam al Anbiya wal Mursaleen. They mention his name just like that. We find plenty uh, people they, they they are so concerned about uh, Tawheed, oneness of Allah, till he found himself uh, have jafa, they call it jafa, jafwa, harshness against Rasulullah. So sometimes because was, people got false taqwa, he, he said, no, 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 you mustn't do like this, you mustn't do like that, and he abusing and take that shawq and that desire of uh, that muhabbat of Rasulullah from the heart of the people. That is also bad because the sign of jafa or that harshness that uh, you don't count the sunnah as something important. They count it as extra stuff. Like he's reading his farad and run away. And he say, no, sunnah is extra. It's, a, it's a extra ibadah. No. Extra, we need it. We need it. Sunnah is interpretation of the farad. Sunnah is a confirmation of the farad. So never ever do. Someone practice the sunnah with no muhabba. Using miswak, eating with the hand and all that. Another thing also, he left the sunnah for the worldly things. He said, I used to do this, but I don't want because of some benefit like this. As we said, فَمَنْ رَغِبَ عَنْ سُنَّتِي فَلَيْسَ مِنِّي These people, they turn away, they disconnect themselves from the sunnah of Rasulullah sallam. Many people, they don't practice all the sunnah, but they want, they desire to practice it. And they feel very bad because they are unable to practice it. He loved that sunnah, but he find it difficult for him now, and he's willing to practice that sunnah later on. But what about those who ignore the sunnah, become very harsh and rough to the sunnah, and doesn't count it as very important for, for, for them? 
The other thing also, some people, they deny the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, no, Quran is better. That is harshness against Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Another one, he said, no, 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 this hadith is fine, but it's not practical. We can't practice it now. It's for that time. That is also harshness against. You think that Prophet ﷺ gave that hadith only for the time of Sahaba, not in our time till the day of Qiyamah? Another thing also, he said, no, this thing, yeah, we can't apply now because it's impossible to practice it now. Someone working in the bank, working in the offices, and he want to drink water while he's sitting. So he said, no, you know what, I'm standing, I have to drink because people are going to look at me and all that. He was so concerned about the people's word more than the concern of Rasulullah sallallahu on the Sirat when he questioned him about this sunnah. The other thing also, uh, he respecting the opinion of the alim more than the hadith itself. Now you say, qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa like many of our brothers they send SMS. The Sharia said like that, what is your opinion? You see, after the opinion of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa we have no saying at all. Like Imam Shafi'i, someone tell him, uh, 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 fi hadha? What do you say about this mas'ala? But Allah said like that, he said, okay, but what do you say yourself? Sayyidina uh, Imam Shafi'i said, who you are and who am I? Are we on the church putting our own comment and our own opinion here? So it is a harshness against the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Another harshness also, someone doesn't know the seerah of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He doesn't know the, the life story of Rasulullah. You tell him, you say, born in Mecca, near the Kaaba, his wife is Khadija, like this, a petal of Badr, and that's it. So he conclude uh, the seerah, 23 years, da'wah, and he gave it in a small kitab like this. No. So we have to learn. He knows the, the, the history of South Africa. He knows the history of his the, the politician. And he knows where this one here was in the jail for how many years. This one was a leader, the soccer player born like this. He got how many children. But when you ask him about Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he doesn't give enough information. He, he, he doesn't care. He doesn't care. Another thing also, as we said, people disrespect him in the kitab. When you find the name of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you scratch. Someone doesn't want to give his son name Muhammad because he say, one day I'm going to shout my son. I'm going to shout the name of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Another thing also, mocking ahlu sunnah wal jama'ah. Someone practicing sunnah and you start to laugh at him. Actually, you are not mocking that person. You're mocking the founder of that sunnah, our beloved Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Brother and sister Islam. Let me put it this way. All the roads are closed to Allah except the road of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa because we have only that road. Road of Jesus closed after the departure of Jesus. The road of Moses gone. Only we have one way to, re to reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the road of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The other thing also very important that uh, we make disrespect of his place when the people go to Medina, Munawwara, they disrespect the Medina to Rasul Sallallahu and Masjid al Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi raising his voice and all that. You know Masjid al Rasul, Masjid al Quba, uh, Mountain of Uhud and all the places where Rasul Sallallahu used to stand and stop there. If you do not know the value of your Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi you will never give him the love if you don't know the qualities of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi those who involve on bid'ah, those who involve on bid'ah. What is a bid'ah? To invent something and you call it sunnah. Now, now we are talking about how much struggle we have when, we, we, when the people don't unable to practice the sunnah and we find someone want to increase that uh, sunnah, which is bid'ah. What is bid'ah? Bid'ah when you invent something to worship Allah with. We call it ibadah. Min, min, it is not from the jinsi ma farad Allah. The ulama say, how you know that what you're doing is bid'ah? Something new is not there on the kitab and sunnah. Because you're reading salah. Sallu kama ra'aytumuni usalli. Read salah as you saw me reading salah. As it is in the kitab. But I cannot find someone who is giving something about Rasulullah and ask me to do it, but it's not there. The main war 
and the main fight of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam that he came to stop shirk. The main message of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam why he became a nabi just to stop the shirk of the Christian. The way they abused Jesus or Isa in his lifetime and after his, he left, they, 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 that's why Nabi came for that. To, to, the cancer, the virus of religion is shirk. That's why we say to the brother, read Surah Al-Kahf, فَمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُوا لِقَاءَ رَبِّهِ فَلْيَعْمَلْ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا وَلَا يُشْرِكْ بِعِبَادَةِ رَبِّهِ أَحَدًا Do not associate partner with Allah in ibadah. Even if you are making ibadah. You want to fast? Fast according the kitab and sunnah. You want to praise Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, praise him as it's written in the kitab and sunnah. You want to make salah, no problem. You spend the whole night salah, but salat according the kitab and sunnah. There is no place for you to increase something which is not there because we have enough we did not fulfill. So now the brother say, no, let me go and make dhikr. Okay, you make dhikr, yeah. Do you know how was the dhikr of Rasulullah sallallahu uh, Yeah, I know little, but let me do it this way. He said, no, wait. You have to finish that dhikr and then we'll talk about this later on. You got so many ways of dhikr, Nabi Muhammad sallallahu used to do it. Now we're bringing extra there. We're struggling with that one, the original one. Like someone, he got five, six books he must do this year and he's going to get exam and pass. Now he left that three books from the seven and he gets some magazine and some outside boxes and read it, he will never write the exam on it. So he's, he, he, he blocked the way of teaching and he wastes the time on top of their dead books against that, their dead, our books. Brothers and sisters Islam, be careful of your ibadah, do it according to the kitab and sunnah. May Allah save us from any bid'ah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us this muhabba, they call it a practical muhabba, according the kitab and sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Love your Nabi as you like, but under the scale of kitab and sunnah. Praise your Nabi as you like, but according the teaching of our beloved Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Make dua that Allah save you and all your family from any type of bid'ah. May Allah give us iman al-sahih. May Allah give us ibadat al-sahiha so that we can gain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Unfortunately, our time is up. Inshallah, we'll continue next time. Shukran jazeelan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. La ilaha illa Allah, la ilaha illa Allah, la ilaha illa Allah, ma lana rabbun siwa. Yeah.